Hello and welcome to our second part in the series Making Music with Analog and Digital Sound Gear. We're here doing a serious comparison to see what we can learn and how best to advise musicians in this brave new world of the 21st century. I'm Stephen Mendez from 21st Century Music and today I'm at the University of the West Indies and we're going to conduct some more experiments uh, using vintage gear as well as modern gear to see what we might learn and to scientifically evaluate whether the claims by the musicians are true that in fact the analog gear gives superior results and the digital is crap. So we're going to explore it now as we look to answer certain specific questions. Today we're going to, on the test equipment side, we're going to use a Protec analog 20 megahertz oscilloscope and then we have a B and K signal generator with frequency counter on board. Here we have the VR09 keyboard by Roland and uh, we're going to be using the flash drive on this keyboard it comes with an embedded flash drive where you can save your sounds or play along with it the flash drive is under here as you can see we have it loaded we're going to play some sine wave sweeps uh, that we have uh, recorded on that they were done professionally in a studio and it, it represents the ultimate in a digitally recorded sine wave we're going to play that through the analog to digital converters and we're going to monitor the analog output of this keyboard. And what we're trying to do, this is going to be part of our experiment to determine if we get a lower distortion, better quality sine wave coming from a digital source through a digital to analog converter in a modern piece of music gear and we are going to compare the sine wave that we get from that output with this old 1980s vintage cassette recorder. We have loaded in this a cassette uh, that contains a pure sine wave tone at various frequencies in the audio spectrum and that has been recorded once again with the utmost care on cassette tape in a completely analog fashion. Uh, this, so this is a, an analog oscillator uh, was producing the audio waves. They were recorded on this very same recorder. This is an MT44 from around the 1980s, a four-track unit. We're going to be playing back our completely analog sine wave from this recorder. And we're going to be looking at and comparing our waveforms to see whether we get a better quality wave from the recorded analog, completely analog system or from the digitally generated and produced sine wave from the flash drive. Finally, we have here with us in the studio, I mean in the lab, excuse me, a D110 multi-timbral sound module by Roland that dates back to the 1980s era as well. This is one of their first units that explores linear arithmetic synthesis and it has the capability to mix uh, square or triangle waves with um, samples. We're going to use it in the mode where we're simply going to output the um, square wave and compare it with the square wave which you saw in the last video that came from the a virtual analog engine in the FA06 workstation, one of Roland's most recently released workstation. So we want to see what sort of a square wave we get from this device, what sort of a square wave we get from this device and compare it with what you saw in the previous video. That's the low frequency waveform around 20 hertz. I hope you can see it there without the... I'll try to... and the frequency is increasing. It's going up in a third octave. As we go here, I'm going to turn up the intensity. 
As you can see, there's some amount of clipping that's taking place. And that's supposed to be a sine wave. I'm going to see if I can reduce the clipping. No, I, as I reduce the thing, the clipping appears to be occurring. The clipping appears to be occurring in the digital signal. Or perhaps it's as a result of the conversion. I'm not sure why we're getting that clipping, but clearly we're not getting a sine wave output from the CD. This was originally taken off of a CD where we were, uh, the frequency sweep was supposedly done in the studio. Somewhere along the line, we got, we've, we've got clipping at both the top and bottom of the sine wave. This is supposed to be a sine wave form. So we're, as you can see, we're a little disturbed by this because we've not got the pure tones we were hoping to get. It's quite obvious here that it's nothing to do with the, nothing to do with the level of the keyboard output. So whatever, we believe that the digital signal recording on the flash drive is actually like this. But to prove that, what we're going higher and higher in frequency as you can see, to prove that, what we're going to do next time in our next part three, we're going to play back this on a, we're going to, ah, now we're getting more signy there. This is, this is in the very highest frequencies. Um, right, as I said, this is a third octave sweep in uh, all the way up to, to uh, 16 kilohertz. And uh, we're going to see We're going to see um, how it looks. Okay, that's the end of it. Just before we move off of our Roland keyboard VR09, this is the triangle waveform coming from the flash drive. Once again, as we had with the FA06, we were able to get an almost perfect triangular wave. As you can see, there we have an almost perfect triangular wave at a, at a thousand hertz one kilohertz and now we're looking at the uh, square wave at a thousand hertz coming off of the uh, keyboard um, flash drive now notice you're getting that same sort of ringing behavior in the flat spots that we had on the Roland so the Roland FA06 so perhaps we're learning something here. I had no idea how these things were going to look when I, this is a, this is truly research that we're conducting. Okay, we've dropped our square wave down to 500 hertz to see, and we're noticing that we do get the flat spot, but we get the ringing. Notice the, the ringing little oscillation part on the flat at both the, when it comes up and when it goes down. That, it seems to be the nature of this square wave. And it may have something to do with the analog to digital converters after all. We may end up actually proving in this video that analog really is best, so stay tuned. Okay, now you're looking at the square wave that's coming out of the Roland D110. This is the square wave. Now it doesn't seem to have as much um, ringing as it is on the flat as the other newer equipment does. But we're still getting a significant um, oscillation there on the rising side and falling side of the square wave, as you can see in the oscilloscope pattern. Now this is the sawtooth wave, sawtooth wave coming out of the Roland D110 multi-timbral module. This is what the sawtooth wave looks like. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and see if we can see how it's looking. As you can see once again, we've zoomed in. It's good, but it's not perfect. Good, but not perfect. We're going to have to compare these waveforms to analog to see what happens next. And finally, to round out this afternoon's episode, we have the audio tones from the true analog recorder. These sine waves increasing in frequency are coming from the recorder. Observe how pure and perfect they look. 
on the oscilloscope. And as the frequency increases, obviously there, there that's, that, that's another frequency increase there. As they go higher and higher, in let's let let's let's look at them in all their glory, shall we? Let's um right, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a beautiful sine wave that you're seeing there from the audio? There we go again, a slightly higher frequency. That's what you get when you have quality sine wave oscillators recorded on quality audio tape. High quality set, I mean if it was real to real, chances are it would even be better. I wish I had some recorded square waves. I think I'll have to do that in uh, part. I'll have to do that in the next part. So keep watching the show. In the next part, we're going to record some perfect square waves and see how they distort in the uh, analog equipment. Because in reality, the square waves is really where the test is at. If you can re reproduce a perfect square wave, uh, then you know for sure you've got a good uh, system. Uh, because the square waves, because of the harmonics that are present in the square waves, uh, any, any distortion to the square waves uh, shows possible problems in the analog to digital conversion process and so forth and so on. So the real acid test will be with the square waves. Stay tuned and thanks for watching us on 21st century music. Okay, there's the beautiful clean square wave from our lab oscillator. Notice how perfect a square wave we have from our lab oscillator. We are going to record this now on the analog tape. Our analog experiment was a complete disaster. Um, as you can see, it's not easy to record a square wave and get it to remain square. You saw our beautiful square wave on the oscilloscope. This is what it looks like after being recorded and played back on the recording. We, we just couldn't wait till next time, so we're giving it to you today. And as you can see what has happened, it's even worse than what comes out of our analog to digital converter in terms of the amount of distortion of the wave shape that we are experiencing here. Okay, so this is a one kilohertz, one kilohertz square wave. But remember that when you saw it at first, now this is, this is a 100 hertz square wave. So you can see that we've even got a worse situation there at 100 hertz. And actually the, the level dropped off, I just made a slight increase in the level. But um, we, we, recorded, we recorded three three square waves on our analog tape. This one here now is a 10 kilohertz. And the 10 kilohertz is pretty much similar. Ah no, there's the 10 kilohertz. That's a 10 kilohertz there. We're gonna just show you how it looks at 10 kilohertz. No oh, wait, something's gone wrong. It's only a sine wave. At 10 kilohertz, our square wave is actually turned into a sine wave, as you can see here on the display. A hundred cycles, in fact, a hundred and two cycles square wave. A one kilohertz, well actually 100,001, 1,000 cycles are one kilohertz, square wave. A 10 kilohertz square wave. At the end of the day, folks, you can't expect any audio gear whatsoever to match up to lab equipment with a 20 megahertz oscilloscope and a 5 megahertz function generator. The quality is going to be superior to anything that you could possibly expect to find in any audio gear.
Stay tuned as we bring you more. We're not finished yet. Stay tuned as we bring you more.